Welcome, my name is Drew, call sign AC3DS, and I'm glad that you've made it here to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. And today I am going to be doing a quick review of the ICOM 7300, and I have had this radio for two years now. I am a relatively new ham radio operator, and this is my first and only HF rig. And so after two full years of using it, I feel like I can finally give a pretty good, decent review of it. So here we go, let's jump right in. So some things that I love about this radio. First of all, the waterfall. It's gorgeous, it's easy to use. As a new radio operator, I am uh, really enamored by the ability to see what's going on across the, the spectrum. Wonderful, absolutely love it, highly recommend it. Two, audio quality. Uh, from the speaker coming out, good, clean, crisp audio. I've used the, the headphone jack, again, with just a regular pair of janky headphones, and they work perfectly fine. Um, but the audio from the speaker, good. As far as sending uh, audio out, uh, I've got great reviews. Everyone that, you know, not everyone, but a lot of reviews that I've received and a lot of signal reports that I've received say, you know, that it's just the very typical ICOM 7300 quality, which is really nice, crisp, and clear. So uh, really good audio quality. Number three, ease of use. Again, being a new ham radio operator, I, I didn't have a lot of, I didn't, I really had zero experience with, with HF radios prior to getting and using this one. And so, um, you know, being able to say that it's easy to use, I think should hopefully mean something. I am able to navigate the menus. I have been for a while now without, with, with relative ease. Um, you know, everything just works. It's clean, it's simple, but yet there's a lot of bells and whistles that make it very functionable as well. Okay, so good, ease of use. Um, let's go with four. Let's go with some of like those bells and whistles. So uh, slow scan TV, digital modes, things like that, things that maybe aren't the traditional single sideband, uh, you know, phone-based uh, transceiver functions. But those, uh, those, uh, those, you know, level ups, right? The, the SSTV, the digital modes, others, uh, they all work. I've done it with this radio. Not a ton, but I've done it and it works and it's easy, relatively speaking, to do. So really, really like the, the flexibility that comes from being able to use it and uh, do different things with it in the future. Uh, number five, quiet. It is nice and quiet. I mean, you know, the, the fan runs. It does work fine, you know, when I'm using it a lot, but... Otherwise, it's just a very quiet radio, which is really nice. I, I don't like a lot of excess excess noise around me. Um, number six, uh, taking the ability to take it mobile. This radio weighs nine pounds. However, uh, I have taken it out. I've I've gone uh, and used it for Poda. I've uh, you know I've used it uh, just taking out to, to be able to to go other places and show people how to use uh, a ham radio, and it is very, very functional in terms of taking it mobile. So I like that aspect of it. Is it the easiest? Is it the cleanest for, for going mobile? Would a three pound radio be better? Sure. But even at nine pounds, it, it, it works perfectly fine. No complaints whatsoever about taking it mobile. Um, next, talking about, let's talk about the tuner here. So the tuner, if I go to tune up, uh, it works. And I, and I would say this, uh, I have two different antennas and I have found that the tuner works perfectly. I even have, uh, I've been able to use an external tuner and I get just as good performance from the internal tuner as I've gotten from an external tuner. So no complaints whatsoever and really like it actually uh, because it's built in and I don't have to worry about some uh, additional piece of hardware. Would a really expensive external tuner work better? Maybe, probably. But for being a first-time radio uh, and, a, and a new radio operator, this works beautifully. Um, let's go with the SWR meter. So if I go into the menu here and I go to the SWR, I am able to uh, quickly check and you know check and see what my SWR is. I'm not going to do it at this exact moment, but it's a very simple, easy process. Again, for somebody that doesn't have a ton of experience, this is a really nice way of being able to you know, check your SWR across a band. 
Now, for the long time, I for the longest time, I didn't have an antenna tuner, and so I used this feature to be able to check my antennas. Um, and and again, it worked for a long, long time. I didn't need to get an antenna tuner. I wanted to get one. So yeah, but the SWR meter works beautifully. All right, what else? Uh, recording. The recording function on this is beautiful. If I go to quick here, I go to record start, or, and just like that, it is recording and saving onto this SD card, which is great because, you know what, occasionally when I'm anticipating making, uh, you know, some DX contacts, uh, I enjoy recording it for being able to go back to it and play it back later and say, yeah, like, okay, that was exactly how that conversation was. It wasn't just in my head that way. It really did actually occur that way. And being able to record, you know, what's coming out of my speakers and what's going into my microphone at the same time, it, it's really, really nice. So those are the things that I really like about it. Uh, and again, I, I highly recommend it. It's great. Now, with any radio, with any piece of technology, there are a few thorns, right? And so the thorns for this radio, again, after two years and really racking my brain to try and come up with some thorns at all. So number one, um, the waterfall display. So if I go back here to the scope, if I wanted to look at a partic the particular frequency that I'm on and I really wanted to zoom in and, and, and really look at this frequency, I can click, I can tap on the screen and I can see it a little bit more closely. However, the ability to dynamically zoom in on a particular frequency that you're on doesn't really exist well. It's there, kind of, and you can change the, the, the parameters of the, the band that you're seeing in terms of the width, the amount of the spectrum that you're seeing, um, but it is not intuitive to do that at all. It is not clean. It is not... Uh, user friendly at all to do that. Is it necessary to do, to be able to do that? No, it's not. It really isn't. Um, however, there are times where there are signals that are really close together, and I would love to be able to visually separate those out in addition to being able to hear them. Um, and so I, I wish that they had made it a little bit cleaner in terms of being able to zoom in on a particular frequency. But overall, that's not a big deal. Um, and the second thing that, you know, I, I kind of wish that they, they had done a little bit differently, presets for digital. So there are a few, there are quite a few, um, you know, programs out there for computers for working the digital modes. But there are a few that are used a lot more frequently than the others. And it would have been nice if ICOM had those presets already built in to say, oh, well, if you're working with this program here, just quickly load that preset and it's going to change all of those settings, um, you know, that are necessary in order to communicate using the USB cable, uh, you know, and assuming that you're on, you know, a Windows machine or a Mac or whatever. I mean, those things are able to be done and you can... I mean, you can save all of those presets to the SD card anyway after you've manually configured them. It would be nice, though, if they had done that already. Now, I grant you that there is something to be said for having to manually change all of those and learn those settings, um, and I'm glad that I've been able to do that. At the same time, there is something to be said for just having a, a, a bank of presets already there ready to go to be able to pull from. Um, okay, so a few things that I do think about for the future, having had this now for two years. The radio is a great entry-level radio. I, get, I take nothing away from it for, for, for being what it is, right? It's not a VHF, UHF, as well as HF radio. I would love to have a VHF, UHF, um, you know, built in as well, but that's a different radio. That's, but that's something that I'm now thinking about for the future. I don't own a VHF UHF radio in addition to this one. So again, as I'm thinking about this radio and how this has performed for me, it's great. I love it. At the, in the future, I would like to, in addition, get a VHF UHF radio. Um, but that doesn't take anything away from this one. Also, antenna jacks. And again, this is a starter radio. So again, it has one jack in the back and it works fine. And, you know, I can add a coax switch to be able to switch between my multiple antennas. And again, so I don't take anything away from this radio. I'm just thinking, 
you know, after having this for two years, that is something that I would like to upgrade, right? Adding that antenna switch, or if I ever get a future radio, having one that has multiple antenna jacks on the back. Uh, but that is really just about it. It's a great radio. Two years of using it, it shows no signs of wear or tear. It has been a, an absolute workhorse. I could not be more pleased with it. And if you're on the fence about getting a new radio and you're a new operator, I could not recommend this highly enough. So I hope that helps somebody out there. And if you have any questions or comments or thoughts, please leave them down below. And thanks for watching. Until next time, 73.